Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F-15C Eagle and we're looking at air-to-air -air combat. Now air-to-air -air combat can be split into two modes essentially. BVR, beyond visual range, so combat with distances beyond 10 miles between combatants and then within visual range, so combat within 10 miles of combatants, otherwise known as ACM combat. Now for this video to make sense, I'm going to assume that you've already watched the HUD modes and HUD symbology video, which you can find in the F-15 playlist. So let's get to the arming screen and see what we've got. Now, the only real close range missile we have is the AIM-9 Sidewinder. We can have them on pylons 1 and 11 to begin with, air to air. We've got the AIM-9 here, we've got four variations, the L, M, P and P5. The AIM-9 is a close range heat seeking missile with a passive IR sensor on the nose. The L, M and P5 are all aspect seeker heads, so that means that they can fire on a hostile whether they're coming towards us or away from us or side to side. The P is the only one I believe that is a rear aspect only version, which means you can only shoot at a target when it's heading away from you. Of all of these versions, the M, the mic version, is the most modern and the best overall. So we'll arm up with a couple of those for a start. We can also have sidewinders on pylons 3 and 9. And we're also going to equip us with some medium range weapons that were covered in the long range air to air tutorial. Although these are not technically short range missiles, they can be used in visual range combat and hence we're going to equip them as well. So we'll have a couple of AIM-7 mics and a couple of AMRAM AIM-120Bs. And we'll also be looking at the gun today. It's a 20 mil rotary cannon and all we can change with regards to that is the amount of ammo here. Request rearming. Copy. While we do that, let's have a look at our controls today. So to fire the gun, we've got weapon fire. To fire the missiles, we've got weapon release. We get the lock on a target, we have target lock. To use auto acquisition vertical scan mode, we've got that. To use auto acquisition bore scan mode, we've got that. To use longitudinal, longitudinal aiming mode for the sidewinder, we've got that there, which also doubles up as flood mode for the AIM-7 Sparrow. Change weapon, we have this. And that's all we should be needing. Okay, so there are several modes that we can use in ACM combat. So we'll start with Sidewinder mode, caged to bore sight, then Sidewinder uncaged. Then we'll try the AIM-7 Sparrow in flood mode. Then we'll try various missiles in auto acquisition vertical scan, and then auto acquisition bore sight. And then finally, we'll look at the gunnery modes. So we can see down here the, the layout of our aircraft and our ordnance layout. We've got AIM-120 there, AIM-120 there, AIM-7 there, AIM-7 there, and our two sidewinders on there and there. So we're going to unpause. We're going to press 6 for longitudinal aiming mode. And that's going to automatically have selected one of our sidewinders. It's the one on the left here. So what we can see is it's put us in the default mode, which is cage to bore sight mode. You can see the circle here, this is the detection zone of the IR missile selected. So this is not a sensor on the actual aircraft, it's the sensor, that actual sensor there in that missile being shown on our HUD. And it's currently caged or locked to our bore site. Our bore site is our aircraft datum there, the W sign. And the task we'll have to do is maneuver our aircraft, aircraft so that a hostile plane or a plane of any kind gets within that detection zone until it achieves a lock. When it achieves a lock, you will hear the difference in the tone and telling us that it's achieved a lock and it can fire. Now, without our radar on, and we're not using radar for these modes, these are just the sidewinder modes, we've got no ranging information or anything like that. So regards ranging and when to fire, that has to be done by our own intuition, essentially. Other than that, we can see that we've got sidewinders, two of them, it's a missile, there's our MAC, there's our G, nav information down here, and everything else is basic standard HUD symbology. So we're going to unpause, we're going to maneuver the plane so that it has a hostile in in the bore sight and we can see there that it's now got a lock on the target you can hear the change in tone and the change to one circle which hovers above the plane now if we move away from the target i.e. off bore sight you can see that we lose our lock that is because we've caged the IR seeker head on that missile to the aeroplane it does not have the ability to swivel on its gimbal mount it can only look forward and if we go up again we can get him, get him again. Like I said, with regards range, we've got no range information because we've got no radar on. So we're just going to take the shot now. I'm pretty sure that's within range. Regards range of this missile, absolute best case, if you're head on, realistically, at about 20,000 feet with another fast plane, you can get about 10 miles out of it. Worst case, if you're chasing a target low down to the ground, about two miles. So we're going to press and hold weapon release. Box two. You can see that it's uncaged, uh, recaged, and locked again. That's because it switched to this missile now. So we've now got this seeker head in our HUD. We can, this is a self guiding missile, so we can lose the lock and turn around now, as I'll show you, and it will still track. 
kabooming. Okay, so that was using the missile in cage mode. Now we're going to use the uncage mode. So we're going to unpause. We're going to press six again. And we get slightly different symbology. We can, we've got this circle in the middle showing that the seeker head is still fixed to our aircraft datum here. But this now is the outer detection ring of the missile. So all we have to do in this mode is get the hostile within this outer ring. And it will keep a lock on, on the hostile whenever it is in that outer ring. It gives us a bit more scope of movement and makes it a bit easier to lock. So we're going to do that now. So you can see we've got much more scope of movement inside the circle. And we can take that shot. And kaboomy. So that's using the sidewinder without the radar. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our radar on. And what we can do with that is we can slave the seeker head. Remember the seeker head on, that, on the missile is on a gimbal. It can tilt at various angles up to about 60 degrees on any angle I believe. And we can control that or slave that with our radar. So I'm going to reset the exercise. So the first thing we're going to do is unpause. We're going to press the 4 key to choose auto acquisition mode boresight. We could equally, equally use 3 for vertical scan. It's automatically selected the side wire in the forest, thinking it's the best choice for us. If we didn't want that, we could use the change weapon to select one of these guys here. We've got, again, our small circle, which shows the current position or angle or direction of the seeker head, the gimbal seeker head of the missile. We've got the detection zone of the seeker head here. And we've got the radar, so that is regards the sidewinder, that is regards the sidewinder. This one here is the boresight of our radar. And what we want to do is maneuver so that the hostile gets within the boresight of the radar, this one here. We will then get an auto acquisition radar lock on him. And then I'll show you what we can do from there. So we've got our radar on now, basically. That's the difference. So we're going to find him, put him in our circle. And so it's very different now. Now we've got a radar lock. So what we can tell is that we've got a box around him. This is uh, typical of the radar. We've also got a firing cue saying that we're within range and whatnot. And that's that little triangle below the target box there. We've also got our display lights on the A-frame here telling us that we're good to shoot. And because we've got our radar on them, we've got a radar lock this time, we can get all sorts of information. We can compute firing distances, angles, ballistics, ranges, aspects, and whatnot. So lots more information. First of all, we've got uh, a steering dot here there's a little dot it's hard to make out behind the the w sign and the idea of that dot is it helps us add lead to our target if we need if we need someone now we're not going to lead a lot of lot of lead in this case because the target's going to fly straight but if it was flying left to right then it would lead in front of the target and the name of the game is to get that dot there as close to the w sign the aircraft datum as we can to take the shot failing that at least we need that dot within the ASE, ase circle here Next is we have a range bar. That's 10 miles up there. That's zero miles down here. This is where the guy currently is. That's about two miles away from us. We have a combined speed, no, a closing speed between us of 43 knots. And we have some range markers here. R max, R lethal, R min. This is R max. This is, below this, is the maximum range at which we can fire the missile and it can strike him as long as he doesn't dodge. This is our lethal, this is the maximum range at which we can fire at him and hit him even if he dodges, and this is the minimum range we can use the missile here. Uh, missiles have to be fused and whatnot and that takes about, I don't know, a quarter of a mile or something like that. So he's currently below our lethal and above our min, so we're in a perfect position to shoot him. So what I want to show now is that with this radar lock, we can actually move way off by with boresight. I can point my nose down here and we can still keep the lock. So let's see how far we can go. So we're still locking, we're still locking. And you can see at about 20 degrees off boresight, something like that, we've lost the um, tone of the sidewinder. So let's get that back by moving up. And you can see, once we've got within about 15 degrees or something like that, we've got it back. So if we like, we can actually fire at this off boresight angle. And why don't we do that to show that? So it's box two. Up it goes. Okay, that's him down. So that was showing using the sidewinder, slave to a radar lock. Next, we're going to show using the flood mode for the AIM-7. If we couldn't get a lock on the target for whatever reason, there could be all sorts of reasons for this. There might be a problem with locking the plane because of 
what the plane is. He might be flying at an aspect, he might be beaming, noxing, or whatever, and so we couldn't get a lock, but we could see him visually with our eyes, or we knew roughly where he is. If that's the case, then we're gonna fly fire in flood mode. We're gonna unpause, we're gonna press six for flood mode. We're gonna press change weapon to bring up the, uh, the aim seven. Let's try and get that, there we go. So we brought up the AIM-7, I know it's a bit confusing, but that means AIM-7M, there's two of them, and it's showing actually that we've got a lock. Now, we haven't actually got a lock because of how I explained this works. We don't actually get a lock with flood mode. We just basically put a target in this here and fire the shot, and it will essentially guide to the first target that it sees, or the most appropriate target it sees, within that locking zone. So we're going to move right, and basically we can fire as soon as we get a hostile anywhere within that flood mode. So we've got, a, we've got that guy within the flood mode. We've not got a, a radar lock on it as such, but we have the ability to fire on him like this. So we're gonna take the shot. Hopefully we're within range of the missile and we're not too close. So Fox one. Up it goes. And it sorted him out like that. So that is if we couldn't get a lock for, any, for some reason and uh, the other thing to do is be careful not to get multiple targets like a friend and a hostile within that zone because it's just as likely to go for a friend as a hostile. Personally I never use flood mode because I just find you lose too much control. You don't really know which target is being targeted until the missile hits it. So I always stick to the auto acquisition mode or the sidewinder mode. Okay next we're going to show the auto acquisition modes vertical scan and bore, bore sight scan with our two radar guard missiles, our AIM-7 and our AIM-120. Uh, just to say that we cannot use the flood mode with the AMRAM, it only works with the AIM-7 Sparrow, I believe. So we'll select a Sparrow again. We're gonna press the three key and we've got vertical scan mode. So what's happening in this case is that we've got a line here that goes from the aircraft datum, the longitudinal axis of the aircraft, all the way up to towards its lift vector. Uh, the, it goes up, I think, about 70 degrees maximum. So if you imagine a line drawn all the way up along here, and it, the radar is scanning now only along that line. It's confined or caged to that line. What we have to do is maneuver a plane so that it passes across this line, and then we will acquire a radar lock on them, and then we'll be able to fire our missile. So it's not just the line that you can see here visually. Like I said, it goes all the way up. So what we will do this time is maneuver an aircraft, and again, this is an ACM mode, so within 10 miles for this to work. We're going to maneuver him across our axis, and there we've got a lock. You can see past the theoretical line moving up here, and we've got a lock. And we've got all the information we need. We've got our, um, our one remaining sparrow left. We've got our target box here. Now, it can't actually put it over the target here because that's outside the HUD. So it's just putting it out the top of the HUD, telling us that we need to move up if we want to see him. We've got a triangle here telling us that, uh, that we are within firing parameters. We have our ASE circle here, our steering dot here. We have our lights here telling us that we are locked and good to fire. We have our range bar here, pretty much the same. In this case, that is our lethal there, and this is our minimum here. A little bit more information here. We're range 1.4 miles away from the hostile because we've got a radar on, we've got this extra information, and if we were to fire, we would be five seconds from firing our, the missile to the impact, and we've got our aspect here, T, uh, I think that means his tail, so he's heading away from us. So we could fire now at this aspect. I think it's asking a bit much, so we're going to move up just to ensure that our steering dot is within our ASC circle. Yep, definitely is now. So now we can take the shot. Hopefully our missile can bend enough to make that shot. We'll see if it can, can it? Boomy! Simple as that. And why don't we do the same with the AMRAM? So we're going to choose our AMRAM, select weapon. We're going to choose our mode number three, auto acquisition vertical scan. And again, we'll, just to show that we can, we'll move him right over there. And we can see we've got a lock on him. Now, out of interest, we do not have our firing lights here, and we do not have our little uh, symbol here. So we, although we've locked him up, we've got a decent radar lock, it's saying we're out of parameters to fire, so we can't fire in this case. So this time, we're gonna head up until we do get within parameters to fire. Now we're in parameters to fire. We've got within enough angle deflection to fire. You can see our lights are on. We've got a little star here, which is the AMRAM signal that we can fire. Our steering dot is within our, within our ASC circle, so we can fire. So it's computed that it should be able to bend the missile up. So let's have a go at that. Let's just give it a little bit of a helping hand, a little bit further up. So that's a Fox 3. Let's see if it can bend. 
it can. So that was the vertical scan mode used with the two different missiles. You can see it's really designed for dogfights because if you have a dogfight, you're always going to treat, try and keep your hostile between your longitudinal axis there and your lift vector there on that line is where you're always going to keep your hostile. You won't be able to keep it in the HUD because that's just not possible. Just a couple of other bits of information I may have not mentioned where, when we've got a radar lock. Uh, I've mentioned this down here that we've got. I've mentioned this down here that we've got. Uh, I did not mention it. On the outside of the ASE, ASE circle is a tick here. And this shows the aspect of the hostile. Because it's pointing upwards, he's heading away from us. If it was pointing downwards, he would be heading hot to us. If it was pointing right like this, he would be heading from left to right from our view. Okay, so next let's do auto acquisition bore sight mode. Unpause. Got one missile left. We're going to press 4. And we get bore sight mode. So... This is the detection range here of the missile, which is of no real consequence at the moment because we're going to be using our radar bore sight mode. And again, like we use with the sidewinder, this is our radar, radar bore sight. We want to maneuver the hostile so it's in here and then that will acquire a lock. So let's do that. So we've moved him into the circle. We've got a lock. We've got our ASE circle here with all the radar base elements that we've talked about before. So we will fire at him, make sure he's in, within range. Yeah, he's above the minimum marker. And again, just because we want to bend the limit as much as possible, let's see how much deflection we can get. And the ballistics computer will calculate how much deflection we can fire at. And we will lose our yellow lights if we in exceed that deflection. You can see that steering dot getting close to the ASC circle. As soon as it gets outwards, then we know can no longer fire. Once it gets inwards, we can fire. So we can fire there. So let's see if we can bend that missile. Press and hold weapon release. And it's bending. Kaboomy. So that is all of the ACM radar and non-radar missile modes. Now all we've got to try is our gunnery modes. I think we've shut all the hostiles down now. So we'll restart and look at the gunnery modes. Okay, so we've reset. We're now going to look at using the gun. We can use it in two modes, with or without radar lock. Without radar lock, it's essentially just a bore-sided gun pipper that we have. And we have no kind of ballistics calculation or anything like that. So to do that, and I forgot to show you this earlier, we need to use the cannon button there to select the cannon. So we're going to press that. And we've got the cannon. So we've just got a bore-sided, uh, uh, sorry, a cage. Uh, reticle here for aiming and well there's not much to say really you aim near the target and hope for the best so i'm gonna aim see if i can hit him so you've got no ranging or ballistics calculation or lead or anything ah i missed him god damn it i <laughs> got him Okay, so that's that. To be honest, it's not a great deal of use, and I don't know why you'd ever use it. I guess unless your radar couldn't use your radar for some reason. Now, let's try it with the radar. So we're going to press the I key. And we are going to try and attract a hostile. I'm just going to have to roll over this guy. And what I did there is uh, by pressing the I key, I turned the radar on. And then what I had to do was move the target into the pipper, into the, 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 the circular gun sight, and it's now achieved a radar lock. So we've now got a radar lock, and we now have ballistics computation. So let me just settle here. So we've got a lock on the target. Again, we've got this box here, and it will continue a lock anywhere within the gimbal limits of the radar of 70 degrees either way or whatever it is. I've got my target reticle here, my gun reticle here, which has got a lot more information now. So to begin with, we have a winding clock. Now, it's almost completely unwound at the moment, but that's because we are so close to the target. If I were to let the target get away a bit, let's do that, we'll see that the ranging clock starts to increase. There, you see that inner line starts to increase. Um, as soon as the ranging clock starts to unwind is when you're in range to fire, basically. So if we keep letting him get further and further away, once the, the unwinding gets all the way up to about there, that's our maximum um, that's our maximum range to fire. We've also got our ranging here, but we've got no firing cues there. So the idea is this is a ballistics computation. It's going to calculate lead, bullet drop, wind. Well, not wind, but, you know, all sorts of stuff. So here is our bore-sighted aiming. This is where the gun is actually firing at this cross here. And the deviation between that and the pipper, we want to aim the pipper here. That's basically with... The pipper point here is with added calculation. So we want to aim this pipper 
at the target, not the gun cross, and that will give us our computed firing solution. Now it would be easier to see if we attacked him from the side because it would be adding a bit more lead on. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna turn away and attack him from the side just to show you. Now we're coming on a more side aspect. You can see that there's a lot more lead that has to be added. That's where the gun's firing, that's fixed to the airframe, so it never moves, but that's the computation of the gun solution so I want to maneuver so that dot right there is over the target then I pull the trigger and it's all then computed to fire um, and we know we're in this bow because we've got GDS here gun something solution gun designated solution I think so let's give it a shot shall we <laughs> Mr. Blighter let's try again Missed him again let's try again it's usually a very good gun Maybe having a trouble with the hostile because he's not actually trying to dodge. Got a few hits there. A few more hits. And we've got him in the end. It is a really good gun. Even if a hostile is moving heavily up your uh, lift vector, you can hit him pretty easily with that. So we've showed the ACM modes. We've showed how to use Sidewinder in caged and uncaged mode. How to use Sidewinder slave to the radar. How to use auto acquisition mode with the two different radar guided missiles. Vertical scan and bore sight scan. And we've showed how to use the gun in... GDS and LCS modes. Nothing to add. I hope that helps and see you later.